Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, you will have to ignore this, like what is it, what is this, like what is it? Um, you'll have to ignore my stupid hair for today. I am going to do a products video, as I always do. Mm. Um, and this is going to be my shitty crappy products video. So I don't usually buy crap products, which I know sounds a bit weird. I always like research and research before I buy a product. So I have a fair idea if I'm going to like it or not. But sometimes some things fall through the net and I still end up buying crap products. Now, when I say crap, I don't necessarily mean they are actually crap products. It's just that I regret buying them. And for me, they didn't work, but they may work for somebody else. In fact, some of these products are really raved about and I just didn't like them. So I'm gonna just jump straight in and I'm going to pick out one product that gets, gets so much love in the US and the different equivalent here gets so much love and I think I'm the only person to say I regret buying this but this is the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 foundation and everyone raves about this here on this side of the pond we have the Max Factor 3-in-1 I think it's Infinity 3-in-1 foundation which is I think the exact same as this but I really regret this because although it provides lovely coverage a lovely finish the colors are lovely it's really, really cheap. I think there was a six or seven dollars. Even though all of those things are the case, this breaks me out, which breaks my heart. It really, really upsets me that this stuff breaks me out. Hmm. Um, and the reason I know it is, if I apply this at 10 o'clock in the morning, by three o'clock, I'll start to feel itchy around this area here and I'll start to feel breakouts popping up, which is like the worst. And when I take it off that night, I'll sure enough, I'll see breakouts starting, acne starting around my chin area. And then I'll, it'll take me a week or so to recover from this. And then I'll go, oh, okay, I'll try it again. Try it again. The exact same thing happens. So I can't wear this, which is crap. Mm. Next product is a makeup setting spray and this is the Scandinavia No More Shine Makeup Finishing Spray. This is not my doing, this is the way I got it. The packaging came all kind of bubbled. Now, I ordered this online from the Scandinavia website along with the original makeup setting spray and I thought because I have really oily skin, the No More Shine would be the one to get. Um, the original formula controls my oil a hell of a lot better than this one does. I don't notice any difference in my makeup lasting or my um, oily T-zone when I use this at all. So I may as well be spraying water on my face. So now I did use it up because it was kind of expensive. It was the equivalent to maybe 17 or 18 euro, but I still used it up, but I would not repurchase this. I definitely repurchased the original again, just not the No More Shine. Maybe it's just me. Next product is one that I don't really see talked about anymore on YouTube, but when it was big, it was big. This is the Hard Candy Glamouflage Concealer. And I'm going to show you how heavy coverage this is. It's got a little squeeze top tube. Like you can see, I put on like the tiniest dot there. Uh, sorry. The coverage this provides is absolutely insane like it's like insane i think they market this as a tattoo cover-up the problem i have with this concealer although the coverage is insane and it will cover up whatever you want to cover up on your face it never seems to set on my skin so even if you know if i put on my mac pro longwear i'll apply it to my blemish and maybe i'll leave it two or three minutes blend it in with a finger or a brush and then I just pat powder over it, that's it set. It's not going to move. Even when I powder this, it still seems to be quite movable and kind of greasy. It's almost like it's too creamy to do its job properly. Also, it's a no-go for under the eye area. Not for me anyway, not for anyone who has any sort of wrinklies or starts of any wrinklies. This will accentuate every single line. I've only used this five or six times. I have it in the color light. Next is a nail polish. And this is, oh, when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, it's so pretty. It's this absolutely gorgeous milky blue toned baby pink. And this is the Sally Hansen Salon Effects in the color Shall We Dance? Sorry for blinding you there. And if you look at the bottle, like that is, that is like a gorgeous color. That is like beautiful. And when I looked at the brush, I was so happy because the brush is one of those wide ones. So it makes life really easy for point painting your nails. The problem I have with this is when you apply a coat, it just looks like clear nail polish. You put on a second coat, 
it looks slightly tinted. Third coat, fourth coat, fifth coat. When you put on your fifth coat, you get this color. And as you know, as anyone knows who paints their nails, five coats will never dry and it will be so thick and gloopy on your nails. So if you're after a really, like, really, like, really, really sheer pink, this might be your man. But as regards color payoff, really, really poor. As you can see, I've half the bottle kind of used. I've only, like, painted my nails three times with this. So that will show you how many layers it's taken for me to get a color that I've been happy with and how much product it's actually used on me. So, bit of a fail. Next is a product that was really, really recommended on YouTube and it was limited edition at the time. And this is the Elizabeth Arden Pure Finish Highlighter in the color Rose Illumination. And the packaging is gorgeous, it's fabulous. And the color, I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, it's so pretty. But alas, it's too dark to be a highlighter for my skin. It's too shimmery. Tan skins would look gorgeous wearing this color, but unfortunately it doesn't suit my skin type. So, skin tone. Last is a MAC pigment, and this came with last year's Christmas collection, and this is the color Marabou, and it's the crushed metallic pigment, and as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. If I can just open it without, it just looks like that. Gorgeous purpley, pinky, blue toned pigment. I've used, there was four in the collection, and the other three are fabulous, they're really, really nice. This one is just really hard to work with. It goes onto the eye really, really patchy, so you might have one really really intensely pigmentedly glittery part of your eyelid and then another part might have very little on it. found this really really difficult to work with wet or dry or with MAC Fix Plus or with any sort of sprays. found it really hard to work with so that's also a bit of a fail for me. That's kind of a just a brief roundup of six products that I haven't been liking and I've really regret purchasing but if you have any products that you regret purchasing please leave me a comment down below letting me know what they are also, if you have a video um, on this same topic, let me know down below. I'll go check it out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you really, really soon. Happy Christmas. Bye.